order to qualify, they must first get through the 125s. Dale Earnhardt has captured his 125 race every year this decade. The Intimidator won last year's 500 for the first time and is in the hunt to repeat. But first, he tries to remain perfect in this event in the 1990s. It's a race that can help make or break speed weeks in Daytona. The Gatorade 125s. you back to Daytona. Greg Gumbel back with you at Daytona International Speedway. Coming up, the Gatorade 125 qualifying races from Thursday. 59 drivers were here trying to make the starting field of 43 for the Daytona 500. For more, let's go back upstairs to Mike Joy, Ned Jarrett, and Buddy Baker. Thanks, Greg. There are five ways to get into the Daytona 500. Time trial on the front row like Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart did earn one of the first 14 finishing positions, not counting those drivers in these qualifying races, or fall back on your time trial speed, car owner provisional points, or champions provisional. Ned, that's an awful lot for these drivers to be concerned about here. Oh, it really is. There are a lot of tough ways to get into the Daytona 500. A lot of nervous people going into these races because many of them don't have the speeds to fall back on. Many of them were not high enough in the point standings at the end of last year to fall back on points. So it is a tough, tough situation in these races. And worse yet, if you crash and destroy your car, you have to start at the rear in the 500. So, Buddy Baker, do you go for it or do you save the car for Sunday? It's the only chance you really get to race against the people you're going to run 500 miles with. I made a huge mistake one one time when I was on the pole here. I didn't run the race. I said, I've already won the pole. The car's good. I didn't run the 125 qualifier. End results, terrible car all day long in the 500. They got to go for it. Just concluded the Napa Auto Parts 300. NASCAR is still working on the official order of finish, looking at the way the cars completed that final lap under caution. Unofficially, the top five, Randy LaJoy the winner, Jeff Green, Andy Hillenberg, Matt Kenseth, and they are now showing Mike McLaughlin as the fifth place car. This is very unofficial. Bobby Hillen credited with sixth, Adam Petty now seventh, Kevin LePage, Kevin Grubb, and Jeff Burton are being scored as the top ten. Coming up here at Daytona, tape coverage from Thursday of the Gatorade 125-mile qualifying races for Sunday's Daytona 500. Stay with us. A full sun beats down on the speedway, and that has brought the temperature here up to 70 degrees. Warmer track side. The humidity, though, is oppressive. 93%. A breeze from the north at 7 miles per hour. Let's have a look at the starting lineup for this first race. Jeff Gordon, Sunday's Daytona 500 full sitter, and Ken Schrader, a two-time winner of the qualifying race, share the front row. Mark Martin, the winner of last Sunday's Bud Shootout, and Terry Labonte, who had the fastest 125 in history in 1989. Michael Waltrip, runner-up in this event a year ago, shares the third row with Jeff Burton, looking to make his sixth 500. Sterling Marlin is a two-time winner of the 125, and Kenny Wallace hopes to make his fourth start in the big show. Wally Dollenbeck trying for his sixth Daytona 500, and Bobby Labonte, last year's 500 runner-up. Jerry Nadeau quickened yesterday's practice, and Rick Mass fourth in this event in 91. John Andretti finished third in this race three years ago, and Jimmy Spencer won the 400-miler in July in 94. Dan Part is the local short track graduate, trying to make his first 500. Ricky Rudd is trying to make his 22nd. Bill Elliott has won three of these qualifying races. He starts next to Johnny Benson. Darrell Waltrip, a five-time winner of this sprint, and Buckshot Jones, one of the top rookies this year. Billy Standridge has the only Thunderbird in the field, and Stanton Barrett, second-generation stunt driver and race driver. Jeff Green is trying to put Bud Moore's Ford into the field, and Mike Wallace just named yesterday as a substitute driver in the Judy Dunleavy car. Morgan Shepard has finished second twice in these qualifiers, and Mark Gibson, his sixth year trying, trying to make his first 500. Steve Park, after a tough rookie season, he's back driving for Dale Earnhardt and Robert Presley. 
Ted Musgrave, who ran fourth in the 95-500, and ARCA veteran Norm Benning seeking his first ride in the big dance, fill the final row. Manufacturers break down for this first race. There are 16 Fords, 11 Chevrolets, and three Pontiacs. There are 30 cars starting the event. 50 laps for 125 miles for a purse of $500,000. And the race record for one of these 124, this first 125-mile qualifying race was set back in 1989 by Terry Labonte at over 189 and a half miles an hour. He was driving for Junior Johnson. Obviously, there were no cautions during that race. The historic Daytona International Speedway is two and a half miles around, 31 degrees in the turns, and 18 degrees just below us in the trioval. Six degrees on the back straightaway. We're going to ride along with a couple of hot rods today. Jeff Gordon, starting from the pole, where he will start Sunday's Daytona 500, has our CBS race cam on board. And here's a Rick Hendricks Chevrolet. And you're looking from the back of the Roush Ford, Jack Roush's Ford, Jeff Burton, the driver, starting in sixth position. You see how steep that banking is up in turn four from the back of Burton's car. Here's the man on the bubble, Dan Pardis. By that we mean he is in 14th place in this lineup, not counting Jeff Gordon, who's already earned his way into the 500. He is the man right now who sits in the final transfer spot from this 125-mile race. Pontiac safety car dips to pit road, and Jeff Gordon and Kenny Schrader will bring them down for 125 miles, 50 laps. as teammate to Ken Schrader. There is the 15 of Jeff Green with heavy damage. Dan Pardis, who was the man on the bubble, has front-end damage to his number 50. I believe I saw John Andretti limping along. This is, this is, I'm not talking about some real trouble here. Look at the left front corner of that car, and his time is not good enough to make the Daytona 500 in the 15 car of Bud Moore. No, he's out of it, really. They file back to the caution flag at lap one. Wallace will try to bring his car around to the garage area. Hardis on the right side of your screen and Andretti also limping along. Let's take a look and see if we can see what happens as we go into turn number one. And you can see this car right there down on the bottom of the racetrack and Wally indeed it does get into the back end of Kenny Wallace. Ned, what happened there is he went in on the flat part of the racetrack and slid up. He didn't mean to do it. You can see the car lose grip right there. Go up and make contact right there on the left rear corner, Kenny Wallace. Well, it's very difficult on the first lap of these races when cars are building momentum. I'm sure Wally Dollenbacher, that number 25 Chevrolet, had a good run and was going into that corner faster than Wallace. He looked for space on the bottom of the racetrack, and there just wasn't enough room. Andretti comes to pit road. Kenny Wallace coasts into the garage, hoping his time trial speed is fast enough to make the 500. Hey, man, she's here. Here comes Schrader on the outside, 33, to make another run. Yeah, he's not going to give up up there. He said, I've done it before. I'm going to try it one more time. Boy, is that a beautiful shot. You're riding with Jeff Burton as he starts off turn two and down the back straightaway. Those are new stands there, over, and they're, every seat here is sold out, of course, for the Daytona 500. But I'm telling you, these guys right now, they're starting to get after it. They're getting a lot of information they'll use for the 500 setup. They're not just out there riding around. Now the cars side by side are the Labonte brothers back at about sixth place. There they are, Bobby in the green number 18 and Terry in the five. Schrader found a spot in line, and that kind of left Terry Labonte out on the outside by himself. He's got Michael Walter and Bill Elliott behind him, but he's dropping back just a bit. Ralph Shaheen. Mike, the new tire that Goodyear has brought to Daytona is a little bit thicker than what we've seen here in years past. It has just a little bit more rubber on it. Most of the crew chiefs have told me that it's going to take between 10 to 15 laps before they really get an idea of how the car's going to handle. Got to wear that first layer off. We are now 
working lap 13, so we should be getting a good idea of who's got good handling race cars here today, starting right about now. Thanks, Ralph. The second pack of cars appears to be running down the leaders. All of that double file racing up front is going to bring that second pack to them. We just saw John Andretti head for the garage area. Dick Bergeron. The problem with John Andretti's car, Mike, is all that sheet metal damage that he incurred in the earlier crash. He's gone behind the wall because a tire is rubbing, and he just doesn't want to take a chance on blowing that tire and wrecking the car more than it's wrecked already. How long would it take till they went three of rest? 13 laps. Jimmy Spencer, the man in the middle, number 23. And the, you can see how far away that front pack pulled away from when they went three of rest. They lost about a second right there just by going three of rest. They've lost the draft. Now it's Ricky Rudd at number 10, side by side with Jerry Nadu in his sophomore season in that blue Harry Melling number nine. Now they quickly get back in single file because they see that group being led by Steve Park picking up on them back there. As you look at our rundown in the upper left of your screen, a driver displayed in green has gained a position the last lap, like Norm Benning and Mark Gibson. A driver displayed in red has lost one or more positions since the last time by the strike. CBS Sports coverage of the Gatorade 125 will continue after this message and a word from your local station. Coming up on halfway with Jeff Gordon leading Mark Martin, Sterling Marlin, Jeff Burton, Kenny Schrader, and Terry Labonte. Here's our Circuit City in-car telemetry. We're uh, riding in the 77 of Robert Presley. You see it a little over 190 miles an hour. And the RPMs, buddy, is not nearly as high on these restrictor plate engines as you would see on an unrestricted engine. No, a non-restricted engine that gets a lot of fuel and a lot of air into it, you'd be turning 8,500 and maybe 9,000. With the restrictor plate motor, they make all their horsepower on low RPMs, like 6,800 they're turning right now. You can see they're running just a little over 190 miles an hour. The carburetor restrictor plates have been NASCAR's method of controlling speeds here at Daytona. That carburetor could swallow a volume of air the size of a grapefruit. Instead, it's got four little holes each the size of a grape to pass through to feed that engine. This battle is for sixth place. Terry Labonte in that red and yellow number five. Michael Waltrip, new colors, new ride for him this year. And the number 17. I think Michael Waltrip may be having just a little bit of handling problems on that car because he drops back in the corners just a little bit. And that's usually... Uh, an indication that the car has a little bit of handling problem, maybe starting to get a little loose. Now, we mentioned a moment ago that there was a seven-car breakaway. Those three cars that had lost that draft have picked back up to them now. And now they're going high. They're, they might be about to lose it again, but they had to close back in on the front row. That's Bill Elliott, Rick Mast, and Bobby Labonte. When uh, Elliott climbed the hill there, you saw just about a, a four-car length gap separating them from the front seven. From Jeff Burton, you're looking ahead at Sterling Marlin, two-time winner of the Gatorade 125 here at Daytona, up in that front pack. And Burton, about to have a little company. Kenny Schrader having a real strong look at him. Burton in trouble, though. He's on the bottom part of the racetrack, and you can see the fast traffic on the outside of him there. He'll lose some positions because he, you see Schrader go by on the outside there. Being by yourself at Daytona is not the thing to do. Bill Stevens. Well, the reason that Jeff Burton wound up where he is is because he's been trying everything to hook up with Mark Martin. He's telling Frank Starr and his crew chief that nobody will get out of his way and cooperate, and we know why that is. The last thing in the world the rest of the field wants is for the 6 and the 99 to hook up. So Burton pulls in behind the number 7 of Michael Waltrip. And Mark Martin is the lone Ford in that front pack of Chevrolet. Until you get back to the 99 of Burton. Right. These two guys last year... Uh, Jeff Gordon, and you see right in the sixth car there, Mark Martin, they battled one of the closest battles ever for the national championship. Very strong, but Sterling Marlin looks to the inside as they start off the dog leg, making it too wide for second spot. And evidently, Bobby Labonte sensed that because he made the move coming off the turn four to go to the inside so he could pick up a draft for anyone who might go down there. Sterling Marlin knows how to win at Daytona as well as anybody here. Well, Jeff Burke might be able to get with his teammate in a moment because there's Mark Martin heading backwards a little bit. This looked like a gang fight, and the rest of Mark's gang of Fords didn't <laughs> show up there at the front of the pack, and all the Chevys lined up halfway, 25 of 50 laps coming this time. Boy, I, I take that back to what I said about Michael Waltrip. He's got a very good race car. He moved to the bottom of the racetrack, but he's by himself right now. That's not a good situation, but... 
Uh, apparently, he's just feeling that car out. It's a new team for him, and he's getting a lot of experience right now as to what a Chevrolet wants because he's been in a Ford for the Wood Brothers for a couple of years now. And with these cars racing side by side up here in this first pack, that's good news for that second pack. If we said a moment ago they might not be able to catch them, well, they are beginning to move in on them a little bit now. 2.2 seconds from this group back to the second pack of cars. Mark Martin second just three laps ago. He has drifted back into the clutches of this next group. Well, what he's done is moved back to and got his teammate hooked up with him now. These two may come right back to the front. He has a drafting partner. That might have been strategy. He dropped back there, picked Burton up. Now they're back up on the high side of the racetrack and trying to run down the leader. Stay tuned for more coverage of the Gatorade 125 from Daytona. After 43 laps, just two leaders in this race. One lead change, average speed 158.5 miles per hour. One caution for four laps. Seven cars off the track, out of the race. Four cars crashing out. Dollaback with electrical trouble. Benning and Gibson handling problems. Six laps to go. Labonte's Pontiac is the leader. Schrader's Chevrolet, number 33. Gordon Chevy, number 24. Sterling Marlin Chevy, number 40. And then the Fords, 99 Burton and 6 Mark Martin. Ray Evernham. He yep, looks worried. He don't look worried a bit. They know they have a great race car. They're going to start on the pole. They've learned a lot about race setup through this race. I think the sleeper right now in second place, I think Kenny Schrader may have something for him when it comes right down to the end here. Schrader picked up the nickname The Bear after a symbol of a former sponsor of his. And he may be about to come out of hibernation here with five laps to go to try and pick up his third victory in this event. Here is Darrell Walter. 18th place that will not get him into the daytona 500 we won't know until after the second qualifying race whether or not waltrip has made the show for sunday right the only possible chance he has at this point would be to get in on the past champions provisional that'll depend on what happens with bill Elliott. well last year in the daytona 500 dale earnhardt held off all comers in the closing lap buddy bobby labonte is he in the place to be or is he a sitting duck well, it depends on what happens behind him. If, if the race breaks out for second place, all of a sudden he's out there by himself. He'll have an advantage by being in the lead. If they work together and try to get by him, he might be a sitting duck. Four laps to go. Johnny Benson has come to pit road. You may see his chances of making the 500 going away. Missed the show last year. Did run in the 500 in 1997 after winning the Grand National Championship. I don't think his speed would get him in, but the possibility of the points. He, his car owner finished 22nd in last year's point standing, so that could be a possibility. So, Ned, what I'm hearing is if Schrader and Gordon go together, they could beat Bobby Labonte, but either one by himself might not be able to? I would say that it would be very difficult for either one of them by themselves to pass him. Mike, Jeff Gordon just dropped back just a little bit. I think he's going to try to make a run on these guys. He went back about 10 cars. And now he's making a run for second place as we speak. Underneath Ken Schrader going to turn one. That's Gordon on the inside, and that's where leader Bobby Labonte is. So Schrader is now fronting the outside line. And by the laws of the draft and aerodynamics, is going to move a bit backwards. You can see this isn't just a walk in the park. Jeff Gordon's arm moving back and forth, fighting for control as he goes through the corner. Now you see he's getting pushed around a little bit. Last Pontiac to win a Gatorade 125, Bobby Allison, 1981. Jeff Burton has his line up in the second as they come off the turn two or four there. You can see back in the pack here, three wide as they come off turn four. And look at the gap in front of those cars that continues to open up as long as they stay free of breath. One thing that could help Bobby Labonte is we see that three wide continue through there. I'm not sure how smart that is because they're in the Daytona 500 and they don't need to be taking chances, but they want to finish as far up as they can. I started to say one thing that might help Bobby Labonte, they're coming up on a lap car that might give him a little bit. So no, that's not going to help at all if you come off the turn two and go right by the lap car. That's Johnny Benson just running too slow to be of any help to Bobby Labonte. A lap, two and a half to go. Boy, do we Why know where to put a camera or what? You're riding with a second-place car as they fight along there. Kenny Schrader and Jeff Gordon may have enough momentum. They really hook tight, drop back just a little bit, and 
get momentum. As you see, he looks to the outside. Now the inside, back under there as they come into the trial. One, one lap to go. This is it. Bobby Labonte will be driving with his rear view mirror as much as anything else because he wants to go wherever he thinks Gordon's going to go. Ned, you're exactly right. You see Gordon dropping back just a little bit there, trying to get that toe from the 33 car there in the draft. He's going to try to make his move going down in turn three, but he's not quite going to be able to make it. Bobby goes to the bottom of the racetrack. Schrader now has Jeff Burton on the inside trying to shove one of those Fords up into the top five for Jack Rouse. So Schrader's got to fight the high side. They are two by two for third place, and Gordon is two car lengths back of Bobby Labonte off the final corner. He'll never catch it. 1,200 feet, 500 feet to the finish line for the first time since 1981. A Pontiac wins the Gatorade 125. Bobby Labonte has done it. Ricky Stanton Barrett has caught the whip of a draft, but he's not going to be able to overhaul Ricky Rudd before the finish line. Rudd will earn the final transfer spot. And we'll catch up with Bobby Labonte in victory lane right after this. Mark Martin, the top five. Jimmy Spencer, Michael Waldrop, Robert Presley, Sterling Marlin, Terry Labonte, the top ten. Rick Mass, Steve Park, Jerry Nadeau, Ted Musgrave, and Ricky Rudd all raced their way into the Daytona 500 field. Darrell Waltrip, Mike Wallace, Bill Elliott, and the rest of these drivers will have to hope their qualifying speed is fast enough or their 1998 point standings are high enough to get them into the 500. Let's go to victory lane and Ken Squire. The pride of Corpus Christi, Texas, wins his first 125-mile qualifier. And here is Bobby Labonte about to come out of the Joe Gibbs number 18 to a great accolade from this audience here at Daytona. Bobby, what a lot of muscle this thing has. Well, I tell you what, these guys did a great job. Uh, the motor room, we put a new engine in last night uh, or this morning, and the guys did, and, and they uh, they did a great job. We made a little call on the other one that wasn't quite as good, and this one here is pretty strong. So, Looks like you're ready to win the Great American Race. Well, I don't know if I'm ready. I ain't been trying very long, but, uh, you know, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to say that I've got some uh, good opportunities with a great bunch of guys, and, uh, you know, if we can keep it going for years to come, you know, I might not get mine uh, this year, but I'm going to keep trying every year I can. I can tell you that. Bobby Labonte wins the first of the 125-mile qualifiers. Coming up next, rookie pole sitter Tony Stewart battles defending champ Dale Earnhardt in race two. Five. Rusty Wallace, twice a runner-up in these races, and Ernie Irvin, the 94 and 96 winner. Dale Earnhardt trying to shatter his own record and win his 10th straight qualifying race. Jeremy Mayfield had a strong third place finish in last year's 500. Joe Nemechek goes for his fifth 500 start. And Bobby Hamilton driving for the Morgan McClure team that have won three Daytona 500s. Dale Jarrett won the 500 here in 93 and 96. Kyle Petty looking to make his 20th start. Ward Burton fifth in the qualifier a year ago. And Rich Bickle trying to start his first 500 in a decade. Chad Little seventh in the 500 last year. And Brett Bodine makes his 12th start. Jeffrey Bodine, who won a qualifying race and a 500. Kenny Irwin, last year's Rookie of the Year. Elliot Sadler, the rookie, driving for the storied Wood Brothers. And Kevin LePage, the Vermonter, on the Jack Roush team. Steve Grissom, a front row starter in the 500 in 97. And David Green, trying to make his first 500. Ricky Craven, finished third in the Daytona 500 two years ago. And Andy Hillenberg hopes to make the big dance for the second year in a row. Ken Bouchard, NASCAR Rookie of the Year in 1988, and Gary Bradbury, hoping to get in the 500 for the first time. Then there's Glenn Morgan, the rookie from Texas, and Dave Marcus, who won a qualifying race here 23 years ago. Derek Cope, winner of the 500 in 1990, and for Dick Trickle, it's the 10th different team he's driven for in the 125-miler. Jim Sauter, the other Wisconsin veteran in the field, is driving a second car out of the Dave Marcus shop. Manufacturers break down for this second 125 mile qualifying race. There are 12 Fords in the field, 11 Chevrolets, and 6 Pontiacs. There are 30, 29 cars in this race. 
They'll go for 50 laps, 125 miles, another half a million dollars up for grabs. Race record, 190, 89 and a half, set by Terry Labonte back in 1989. That year, Labonte and Sterling Marlin were the first to run that qualifying race at the 125-mile distance without a pit stop. A trend that continues to this day. Dale Earnhardt will have our CBS race cam, starting as Richard Childress Chevrolet from fifth place. Dale Jarrett. Robert Yates Ford starting from ninth position. And the Siemens in car cam is in the Ward Burton Pontiac. That's Bill Davis racing. And he starts 11th. Jeffrey Bodine from Chamon, New York, driving for Joe Bessie. He is right now the man on the bubble. He starts in 15th position. Tony Stewart in orange and white, the Pontiac on the pole, and he's in fast company. Alongside in blue, number 31, Mike Skinner. Rusty Wallace at that white and blue, number two. Ernie Irvin's yellow, 36. Dale Earnhardt's black, number three. The 12 of Jeremy Mayfield, Wallace's teammate. Here they come, down to the green flag for 50 laps, 125 miles. We're racing. Skinner in the outside lane. Oh, that thing's a rocket. Look at Stewart. Scoot away, and here comes Earnhardt. Earnhardt on the flat part of the racetrack going down towards turn three. You can see just in front of him, Tony Stewart leading the race. But Dale, Dale Earnhardt, did he? He's still the man here. He told me that yesterday in the garage area. And Joe Nemechek slipped up in there. He had a good first lap. A lap right down the back straightaway, and now double file, triple file again coming to the tri-oval, sneaking a look to the bottom of the racetrack with Dale Jarrett in 88. But look at Earnhardt, he's up to second spot. Yeah, team cars side by side going down in there. I bet Richard Children's thing, great guys kind of get together, but they can't right now. There's so much traffic up there, they can't get together. Three wide in turn two, Ernie Irvin way up top. Mike Skinner in the middle, 31, Earnhardt on the bottom. Tony Stewart just sitting out there riding by himself, and here comes Earnhardt trying to move down on the inside. It's where he is, he might get into second, he does. Mike Skinner in all kind of trouble. He got in the middle part of the pack there with the draft is not that great, and he dropped about six, seven position, and he's still sliding back. Look at this crowd, three wide, almost four wide as they come to the trioval, and out in front of all of them by himself is Tony Stewart. Here's Ralph. Fantastic veteran moves being made behind Tony Stewart, but he truly is a rookie. So much so, in fact, that just before the start of the race, while they were rolling around on the pace laps, he radioed in and asked, which gear do I start this thing in? Bobby Labonte called back out and said, try second. So Bobby Labonte on the radio to Tony Stewart. That's as good a coach as you can get. Look at the middle of that pack as they shuffle back near the bubble spot. Three wide, Kenny Irwin, 28 up high. That's Elliot Sadler, the rookie, in the middle of that sandwich, number 21. He's got to contend with the man on the bottom of the racetrack. That 45 is Rich Bickle. Yeah, Bickle right now, you see him wiggling as they come out the corner. A lot of people are running very soft screens trying to get that blade out of the air and make it pass, but handling for you look, you have to give up something to run. Oh, contact there. Boy, this is a recipe for a wreck. All of these cars running free. <laughs> the rest, this many, many laps. I can't there. believe it. Then it looks like the pace lap of the Indy 500 three abreast, but they're running 190 miles an hour like this. That's Kevin LePage up on the outside there. Now he gets broken loose a little bit. He had to say, boy, that felt good. I'm glad I got that done. Upper left of your screen, drivers in green have gained a position like Ricky Craven did last lap. Drivers in red have lost one or more like Dave Marcus back in 24. Look at this fight. Three wide. Now, Elliot Sadler is a Winston Cup rookie, and boy, is he getting an introduction to how tough this is as he stays right in the middle of that three wide pack. Mike, you're exactly right. The reason he's got to do it, this is to get in the Daytona 500. On the inside, Steve Pearson makes a little contact there with Elliot Sadler in 21 car. Nice to see a sponsor on that Joe Falk number 91. Still ran without one all of last season. 
There's Nemechek in 42. He has dropped back from fourth uh, all the way to 20th spot. He had made a great run on the first lap and then it got up there, but as you say, he has really dropped back. But then back at the front, Tony Stewart. How long could the Daytona rookie hold off defending champion Dale Earnhardt? of a sprinkle in turn number three, but at this rate, that should not put the field under caution unless it intensifies. Look at Earnhardt coming around the rookie. And the man who's won every one of these races this decade is trying to put it in the wind. But let me tell you something about Tony Stewart. This kid's a racer, and look at him go after Earnhardt, better defender. Yeah, but he's out in the draft right now, Ned, and he's in trouble. He's going to drop about four or five spots by being on this thing. He has no respect yet. He hasn't run with these guys. They know that Earnhardt knows what he's doing. Plus, Dale Jarrett, give him a big call. He's come up with his field, running in second now, and he knows how to draft. He likes running with uh, Dale Earnhardt. This two, these two guys right here will be hard to pass. Dale Jarrett started ninth. He's climbed to second. Ned, that's the toughest job for any rookie is to gain the respect of the driver so they will trust you to run with you in the draft. It is, and having a fast car doesn't gain that trust. You've got to get up there and mix it up with them and make the right moves up, up there. Tony Stewart's got a fast car, but he needs some friends. Dick Bergeron? And he doesn't have the mic, and they said that this morning. The team was aware that Tony Stewart had to stay in the lead of this event or he was just going to wind up at the back of the pack. He has had trouble here at Daytona. Even though he's an IndyCar champion, he has had trouble here at Daytona finding people who would race with him. They just don't know enough about this young 27-year-old racer, but I'll tell you what, he's a good one, and they're going to learn a whole lot more about Tony Stewart before this deal's done. And his main goal right here is to bring that car back in one piece. If he wrecks that car, he'd still be in the Daytona 500, but he'd be starting at the rear instead of on the outside pole. Let's go back to 23rd spot. That's number 30, Derek Cope. 71 is Dave Marcus, left of your screen. And 72, the second car out of Marcus's small shop, Jim Sauter. 31 times Dave Marcus has been in the Daytona 500, and he's never come to February in Daytona and failed to qualify for the big dance. This year, he's got two cars in this race trying to keep that streak intact. Skinner beginning to rumble. He started on the outside pole, got shuffled back, but he's beginning to come back now. For more on Mike Skinner, here's Ralph. Larry McReynolds is a crew chief for Mike Skinner. Larry Mack, you're starting to work your way back up to the front. Is he finding the right groove? Yeah, I think so. You know, we pretty much knew that the outside line was not going to be the line to even start in. We saw it in the first 125, and we're seeing it now. So, uh, you know, he's, he's running with these guys, getting some good help now. We've got plenty of time. I just told him, be patient. We've got a good car, and we'll see what happens. I'm feeling some drizzle down here. Is it going to affect what your strategy is? I, I don't think so. Again, the weather's a cool. This is going to help the tire situation. We've been a little worried about that as far as just gripping the racetrack. I, I don't think we just need to get to lap 25 and, uh, you know, have this thing be, be a race before we get ready for the 500. Mike, you can definitely feel that drizzle coming now. CBS Sports coverage of the Gatorade 125s will continue after this message and a word from your local station. just about to say what he needs to do is just settle in and run himself a good race. He's in the Daytona 500 if he can maintain that. You know, to stay in that pack. That's all he's got to do. And Ned Irwin is one of those drivers who needs to because neither his qualifying speed nor his point standing position from last year is likely to get him into the race. He's one of these fellows out here who has to race his way in. Yes. Up front. Veterans, Earnhardt, Jarrett, Mayfield, and Wallace. Ralph Sheen. Dale Jarrett is running right up there in 
Todd, Lee Group. Todd, you're in a position to win this thing. What's your strategy going to be now? Uh, I couldn't tell you. But you get that guy out there running second right now. Um, Earnhardt's got a strong car. He's been strong all week long, and you never know what he's got. You know, he's won nine of these things in a row, so he's out front where he usually is. So, uh, but we got a good car. Does it seem better, high, low, in the middle? He seems to be staying on the bottom right behind Earnhardt. So, uh, but he has had to run high. I think the car will go anywhere it needs to go. He hasn't said anything at all. Mike, now he just needs a friend to get on past Dale Earnhardt. Oh, well, he's got a pass forward right behind him in Mayfield. Look at this group. And Tony Stewart's fought his way to the front of it. Yeah, the first five are nose to tail. But back here, there's a war going on. Mike Skinner and, of course, Tony Stewart side by side for about three laps now. They've really been going at it. And as a result, they have lost the draft of that front five. I think they'd be wise to let Tony Stewart get in front and help let him help pull him back up to that lead pack. Now, here's somebody who will work with Stewart. Both Kenny Irwin and Tony Stewart are graduates of USAC open wheel racing. So that's Irwin lined up right behind his old fenderless racing buddy. I think that's what Kenny Irwin has in mind right now, is to try to, to help. Well, no, he's not going to do that. <laughs> I said that. Boy, oh, there's more contact. Tony Stewart got into the left rear corner there as they started in the corner. Yeah, that could have been a tough situation right there. Trouble, turn one, two cars slam into the wall. Dick Trickle, number 13, is one, and David Green, number 41, is the other. Green trying to make his first 500 after being Bush Grand National Champion. And caution will come out for the first time in this second Gatorade 125. They'll race back to the flag. Earnhardt, of course, has them under control. They, they basically will maintain their positions as they come back to the flag. All right, let's have a look at what happened with Dick Trickle and David Green down in turn one. Okay, here is David Green in the 41 car, the white one, as they go down into turn one. Dick Trickle moves up, loses the back end of the car, going into turn one, comes back up, and there's the contact. David Green's car is badly damaged. Dick Trickle may be able to make repairs. We're under caution in the second Gatorade 125. Dale Earnhardt leading Dale Jarrett and Jeremy Mayfield. In 29 laps, Tony Stewart and Dale Earnhardt traded the lead. Average speed slowed to 159 miles an hour by this one caution that has taken David Green out of the race. Dick Trickle made repairs and continues. None of the leaders made pit stops, so we're back under Green with Earnhardt leading. Let's go to Ken Squire. Just behind that front four, Earnhardt, Jarrett, Mayfield, and Wallace. One of the major stories here, number 16 from Shelburne, Vermont. Kevin LePage started 18th on the grid, and here he is in his second Daytona 500 try, challenging the top four as we move toward the end of this race. Mike? Forward to the inside is Mayfield looking at Jarrett for that third spot. No, they're going to hold that bottom line right there. Talking about Kevin LePage in the 16 there, I talked to him and he said the car will not run by itself, but in the draft, it is perfect. And you can see the way he's moved up through the field that he has a rocket ship when he gets them to a race. Well, that seven-car pack make it eight with Chad Little. And they have six behind them trying to join that group, but they just won't settle single file. A lot of racing going on right there with Bobby Hamilton, Derek Colt. Dave Marcus is in that mix and Kenny Irwin. How about Marcus? He's got himself in position. If he can maintain that, then he'll be in another Daytona 500. Dave Marcus trying for the 32nd time to make this race. He has never missed it. Kenny Irwin moves around the outside of Marcus, but if he can tack onto the draft, he'll have a spot in the race. <laughs> no. Here's one reason why. Behind him, they're still skirmishing. Yeah, that's bad to look in the mirror and see them three wide and they're catching you. You see Ricky Craven has been caught there. Kyle Petty just behind him there. Trouble behind the leaders coming out of the trial. The one car goes spinning. It's the rookie from Texas, Glenn Morgan. One, two, three, three, six, Caution will come out. No other contact. Everybody else makes it by. Morgan trying to refire. Gets it started up. 
and out of harm's way. Buddy, what happened here? Boy, he just uh, looked like the car just turned around up there. I didn't see anybody make any contact or anything. You can do that running 200 miles an hour. You can lose the car. I mean, it don't have to have anything wrong or nobody has to touch you. Sometimes the back will just get away from you. 18 laps to go in this second Gatorade 125. Dale Earnhardt trying to win his 10th qualifier in a row here at Daytona. Rich Bickle is the man in the last transfer spot. First pack has gone back to single file, and again, they double it up behind. Now, down to the bottom, Mayfield looking at Jarrett, looking for a move, but he's going to run out of straightaway before they get to the banking. Yeah, he, al he also ran out of horsepower. Jarrett just kicked it in there and threw it away from him a little bit into the straightaway. Oh, look at the pack right behind them, though, while they're single file up front. Rush hour. Wow. Back near the bubble spot. Elliot Sadler, the man on the bubble. Here's your front seven. Earnhardt is trying to whip that snake by changing lanes. <laughs> I they, like that. But here comes Jarrett. Has a look on the outside. No. Back to single file. Ride with Dale Jarrett as you chase Earnhardt here. Yeah, he's trying to figure right now. Has he got a weakness? Are you trying him low? He's looked on the high side right now. It all depends on that last lap, how he positions itself. And that battle's still going on back in the pack. Now Jarrett looks high once again. He's going to see if Mayfield will go with him coming off a of turn four. But he pulls back in line. But no, maybe not. If you're Jeremy Mayfield, do you go with Dale? Or do you haul your teammate Rusty to the bottom and keep try to get by him? Well, that's, that's a good point. And I'm sure that's something that Dale Jarrett is thinking about there. Dick Bergman. If the crew chief could drive the cars, right now you'd see Jeremy Mayfield upstairs. His crew keeps calling him on the radio saying, time to go, get upstairs, that's the place to be. And Jeremy's just being real quiet, he's driving the car. Seven laps to go, 45, Rich Bickle is the bubble car, there he is, on the left side of your screen in that three-wide battle. He's about a foot away, is the distance between making and missing the race. Irwin and Irvin. No, they're not best buddies. No Christmas cards being sent to those houses, I'll tell you. This is going to be wild, these last few laps of the, of the bubble positions back there. Now, Kevin LePage, there's that bright orange car drifting back into the clutches of that second group. That leaves us with only six cars in the lead pack. Derek Cope in the black and gold car there had 30th quick time. He has driven that car perfectly to get himself into the Daytona 500. Remember, they changed engines just an hour before rolling out here to the starting line. Kyle Petty, 44, and Elliott Sadler, 21. Is the bubble battle right in the midst of all this. Look at Sadler, number 21, and look at Urban take him three wide downtown into the turn three banking. Kenny Bouchard, 73, the black and yellow car. Kind of tied up in the midst of that pack as well. Now, he's in contention for that bubble spot, but he's the 20th place car. That's how tight the running. Five laps to go. Earnhardt hauling them around, trying for his 10th straight and his 12th overall victory in the Gatorade 125s. Here's Ralph. Mike, when you're that kind of a veteran like Dale Earnhardt, the crew doesn't have to tell you anything except for where the other cars are. It's single file and how many laps to go. That's all the information he's getting. They're leaving all the driving decisions up to Earnhardt. And he's doing a good job of just that, Ralph. He's moving around on the straightaway, not giving anybody a clean line of draft to follow him. He goes to the outside, then to the inside of the racetrack, down the back straightaway, not giving him a lot of draft. Dave Park is in trouble. He's still in that second pack, but he slid back to 24th position. There's Richard Childress, who owns Mike Skinner's and Dale Earnhardt's car is in danger of missing the 500 for the first time. He does a lot of testing for this man right here, Richard Childress and Dale Earnhardt. Also tests the International Race of Champions cars. Ooh, Ricky Craven in the middle in the car number 58 back there as we go back to the front. Yeah, it looks like a big Congo line as they go down there. Whatever Earnhardt does, they uh, just mirror shadow him down through there. I got a feeling right now 
that Earnhardt's going to be a tough, tough, tough customer to pass because he's using all the racetracks. He can make that car very wide. Six cars to decide it for the win with three laps to go. The Chevrolets of Earnhardt and Skinner, the Fords of Jarrett, Mayfield, Wallace, and LePage are back there. The Pontiac of Tony Stewart. Oh, I, I, I just watching uh, Jim Jarrett right there, and he's looked two or three times on the inside of right down from turn one. If he makes the move, I think that's where it'll be. The bubble car, Ernie Irvin, right there, number 36. <laughs> oh, You're an artist too, huh? <laughs> He's on that spot, and the fellow who wants it, Ricky Craven, and Elliot Sadler, 21, drafting Urban. But that whole pack, Kenny Bouchard's in it, the former rookie of the year. Up with that pack, and Jeffrey Bodine and Kyle Petty. Of those cars right there, only four of them are going to transfer into this race, except by speed or provisionals. It's getting down to crunch time. Yeah, you can tell now. Black flag, the dress rehearsal is over now from here on. When you make a move, you want it to count. That's in that third pack. We're right now, Ernie Irvin, number 36. He is the last car to transfer from the finishing results of this race. Chad Little, Kenny Irwin. All this train around at 13th and 14th place. There is Irvin, 15th, and Jeffrey Bodine, number 60. Wheel marks all over that car. He's got a shot, but he has got to get past Ernie Irvin, and he's got one lap left to do. There's two races, folks. Can Earnhardt String continue by winning this race? And who will make the 500? Jarrett Troy, right back up under him there, but back here, the battle for the transfer spot goes on. And Jeffrey Bodine has gotten past Ernie Irvin. Craven also picked up a spot that last lap. Dale Jarrett has one mile to find a way past Earnhardt. Now Rusty Wallace, Jeremy Mayfield. Mayfield to the bottom. He moves up to second. That's the best thing Dale Earnhardt's seen in his mirror all day is two cars side by side. Yeah, and he's being teamed up right now. You see that? Right now they're coming down to the flag, though. You call it, Mike. It's going to be tight. Earnhardt to win it 10 years in a row. He's won the Gatorade 125. Then it's Mayfield, Jarrett, and here's the bubble battle coming to the strike. Unofficially, Jeffrey Bodine takes the 15th and final transfer spot. And there is the Joe Betsy crew. Six weeks ago, this wasn't even a race team. It's just been put together in that short of time, and they're going to the Daytona 500. When we come back, Dale Earnhardt will be in the place he knows the way to best, Victory Lane at Daytona. judged by more than just who he is and today the jury is out at 211 vine street guess who i saw last night who billy mm, that man is fine too fine and that car car is hot inside that car is hot oh, ruby red i know that man in his mustang i look good in that car billy i look good in that car keep driving billy keep driving the new 1999 ford mustang built to last Coming up tomorrow, the 41st running of the great American race, the Daytona 500, live on CBS, noon Eastern time. Let's go to Victory Lane and Ken Squire. His 32nd victory at Daytona. Earnhardt reigns again in Victory Lane. Ten in a row, Dale, congratulations. What a great car, what a great performance. Fifth to second on that first lap. Brand new race car. <laughs> it worked good all week. We uh, felt good about it in practice. It drove good every lap. I could go anywhere I wanted to go. No push, no loose. She's perfect. She's ready to run 500 miles. Are you ready to become the fourth man in history to win the Daytona 500 back-to-back? -back? 
Well, that'd be great. Uh, you know, we got to get there. It's 500 miles a long way. There's a lot of great race cars. But I tell you, I got to thank Richard Childress and all the guys, the, the crew, the, the engine guys, everybody on board, Jim Goodrich, everybody for hanging with us. This thing did a great job. Dale, congratulations on a beautifully driven race. Thank you. Ten years in a row, Dale Earnhardt has won a Gatorade 125. How about Jeremy Mayfield, third in last year's 500, second today. Dale Jarrett, two-time 500 winner. Rusty Wallace and Mike Skinner, the top five. Tony Stewart, who will start on the outside pole on Sunday, ahead of Kevin LePage, Bobby Hamilton, Ward Burton, and Derek Cope. Rich Bickle, Kyle Petty, and Chad Little had to race their way into the field. So did Ricky Craven and Jeff Bodai, and they all made it. Some of these other drivers, like Kenny Irwin, will fall back on championship points. Ernie Irvin on his qualifying speed, and Elliot Sadler on points. They'll make the 500. And looking on back, Joe Nemechek, Brett Bodine are in it. Dave Marcus, his speed is likely fast enough. Gary Bradbury, Ken Bouchard, not so fortunate. Jim Sauter, Dick Trickle, Morgan and Green, the final finishers. We'll be back with more from Daytona International Speedway after this. It is not whether you fall down, it is whether you get back up. It is not the size of the dog in the fight, it is the size of the fight in the dog. It's not how hard you push along the way, it's having something in your finish. There is a Tiger on the loose at Torrey Pines in the third round. Tiger Woods began the day nine shots back. Here with his three medal from off the green for a birdie at the 14th. And just a moment ago at the par 5 six, his 15th hole of the day, this for Eagle. This to go to nine under for the day and to tie the lead. And there it is. Tiger Woods and Ted Shreva now tied at 14 under Third round action coming up shortly. Now we send you back to Daytona. CBS Sports presentation of the Gatorade 125 is sponsored by Gatorade Thirst Quencher. You either have it in you or you don't. Gatorade, is it in you? Ford Mustang, a new breed of Mustang that's reborn to run. And by Goodyear, innovators of run flat technology. Welcome back to Daytona, everyone. The Gatorade 125 is complete now, and happy hour is well underway as the drivers take one final practice run before tomorrow's Daytona 500. With that in mind, let's get some thoughts on tomorrow's big race, beginning with Ken Squire. Ken. Well, let's talk about who can win this race. For my nickel's worth, I really like Mark Martin. He won that bud shootout. He's had a third, fourth, and a seventh. Had a little trouble last year. I think he's going to be really strong when we get ready to go. Take a look at that starting grid for tomorrow. And let's switch to Mike Joy. Mike, who do you like? Ken, it's a ways down the grid, but Terry Labonte is the name that comes to mind. 21 tries to win the 500. He has a brother in the field, and he has two Hendrick Motorsports teammates. So that's pretty good odds. I'd like to see him win it. Ned Jarrett's been here for every single 500. And I think if they can beat... Dale Jarrett in this year's Daytona 500 will see one of the Labonte brothers in victory lane. Well, Buddy Baker, winner of the fastest 500 ever. Your pick. 33 times Dale Earnhardt has won a race here at Daytona. Won 500, but I have to go with Dale Earnhardt. I think he'll win. Let's check with our pit reporters, beginning with Dick Bergren. And Dick Bergren thinks Buddy Baker is absolutely correct. Dale Earnhardt's going to win the Daytona 500. He was ever so strong in that 125-miler. He's going to win two in a row. Ralph Shaheen. Dick, I don't think Dale Jarrett's shown us all the speed he has yet. I think he saved a little bit for tomorrow, but I still think Dale Earnhardt is going to beat him to the checkered flag tomorrow and go back-to-back. -back. Bill Stevens? I think we're going to have a first-time winner tomorrow in the Daytona 500, and it's Bobby Labonte. Why? Well, the last time a Pontiac won a qualifying race was 1981, 18 years ago. And that's the number that Bobby Labonte wears on his Joe Gibbs Pontiac. Back to you, Mike. Well, there's the balance of the field. Darrell Waltrip did get the champion's provisional to earn the final spot. This practice session, what's the most important thing you can learn from this? <laughs> Not to get in too much trouble. Look how close <laughs> they're running. That's close to 200 miles an hour, three inches apart as they go into turn one. Of course, they're sizing each other up. See how their cars work around other cars in the draft. And of course, the track is the closest to actual race conditions that they've had it since they've been here after the 300-mile bush race this afternoon. 
The Napa Auto Parts 300 just concluded. Randy LaJoy, the winner. And that mad scramble on the last lap. Jeff Green was second. Andy Hillenberg third. Matt Kenseth, Bobby Hillen, the top five. Again, this is still unofficial, but Adam Petty picks up sixth. Kevin LePage, Kevin Grubb, Jeff Burton, Brad Loney, the top ten. And there were only 15 cars on the lead lap primarily because of a lot of accidents here this afternoon. You can see Dale Earnhardt Jr. finished in 14th place. Well, today, old age and treachery overcame youth and enthusiasm, Ned. How about tomorrow? Well, I believe experience will pay off tomorrow. But we won't have as many young drivers, inexperienced drivers in the field tomorrow as we had today. We will still have a couple of rookies. Buddy, when we have a really wild race like this one this afternoon. Does that mean things are a little calmer on Sunday for the 500? You would think that because every one of them watch practice, they watch everything, they watch the races that go on, and a wild one like that, you say yes. But let me tell you, we're going into the Daytona 500, the biggest race of the year. They're going for it. Grand National point standings mirror the order of finish today. They move on to Rockingham, North Carolina next Saturday. Practice continues. Final tune-up to set suspensions and gears and get ready for the great American race, and we can't wait to bring it to you. Greg Gumbel? Mike, thank you for Ken Squire, Mike Joy, Buddy Baker, Ned Jarrett, Dick Bergeron, Ralph Shaheen, and Bill Stevens. I'm Greg Gumbel. So long from the Daytona International Speedway. Don't forget, tomorrow, beginning at noon Eastern time, it's live flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the great American race, the Daytona 500. Coming up next, 